In this video, we're going to have a look at percentages. A percentage is a way to describe what part one value is of another. And it is always measured out of 100. That is why a percentage can be written as a value over 100 or divided by 100. Or instead of divided by 100, you can use the symbol for percentage. Because a percentage can be written in fraction form, all calculations that are acceptable for fractions and ratios are also acceptable for percentages. When working with percentages, there are mainly two types of calculations. Either you can be asked to determine the percentage, or the percentage is given to you and you need to do calculations using that. We are going to have a look how these two types differ from each other. Example 1. Determine what percentage is 15 out of 25. Here we are given the ratio as 15 out of 25. You can continue using the fraction or you can choose to rewrite this in ratio form as 15 to 25. As I've already mentioned, percentage means out of 100, which means the denominator or the right-hand side of the ratio should be 100. To change 25 to 100, we multiply it by 4, which means we need to repeat this on the left, and 15 times 4 is 60. This means that 15 out of 25 is 60% or 60 out of 100. If you're already comfortable with equations, you could also say 15 out of 25 would be equal to something out of 100. To solve this equation and determine that value, I will have to multiply both sides of the equation by 100 so that I can simplify on the right hand side. This means that to determine the percentage, I need to take the original fraction of 15 out of 25 and multiply it by 100. So many people prefer to remember that when I need to determine the percentage, I simply take the original fraction that was given and multiply it by 100. Example 2. If 3 out of every 60 people have blue eyes, what percentage of people have blue eyes? Again, we want to change the right-hand side of our ratio to 100. And now you have a choice. You can either say, to determine what happened with 60 to get 100, I will take 100 and divide it by 60. Then you repeat this on the left-hand side. Or you can choose to first simplify the left-hand side to a 1, and this means I divide it by 3, and also need to divide the right-hand side by 3. 60 divided by 3 is 20. Now it's easier to convert the 20 to 100 by multiplying by 5, which means I also need to multiply the left-hand side by 5, and this gives me 5 over 100, or 5%. Or you can choose to use the conclusion we made in example 1 by taking the fraction given, which is 3 out of 60, and multiplying that by 100. Now you can choose to either use your knowledge on fractions to determine this value, or you can use your calculator to also get 5%. Example 3. Determine how much is 5% of 300. This time you need to realize that the 5% now indicates our ratio of 5 to 100. The 300 tells us that the right hand side of our ratio should now actually be 300 instead of 100 and we need to determine the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have to multiply by 3, which means the same has to be done on the left hand side, and 3 times 5 is 15. This means that 15 Rand is 5% of 300. Once again, you could have chosen to make use of fractions and equations, 
by saying that 5% is 5 over 100 and we need to determine what value out of 300 gives us this 5%. And here the algebra would mean that our next step is multiplying by 300 on both sides so that we can simplify on the right hand side and determine what value will give us this 5%. And here you'll also get 15 Rand. This time we can make the conclusion that when the percentage is given, you can start off by writing that as a fraction by dividing it by 100 and then multiply by the total amount. Example 4. Johan wants to save 7% of his pocket money. If he gets 500 Rand per month, what amount should he save? This time the percentage is given again and the ratio will then be 7 to 100. However, his pocket money is 500 Rand a month, so the right hand side was multiplied by 5 and we need to repeat that on the left. 7 times 5 is 35, which means that Johan should save 35 Rand of his pocket money each month. Or again you could have chosen to use the conclusion we made by saying that the 7% means 7 out of 100 and then multiply that by the total pocket money of 500 Rand and when you do this you will also get 35 Rand. Example 5. At a sale you get 10% off an item that originally cost 640 Rand. How much do you pay for the item at the sale? So here we need to determine how much of the original price is 10% and then subtract that amount from the original cost of the item. We're going to start off with the ratio which is given as 10% or 10 over 100 and then multiply that by the total amount of 640 Rand. This means that 10% is equal to 64 Rand. This is the amount of discount that you will receive at the sale. To determine the amount that you will have to pay at the sale, we need to take the original amount and subtract the discount. This means that you will pay 576 Rand. Another option is that you could have realized that because you get 10% discount, you will only pay 90% of the original cost which means that you could immediately determine 90% or 90 out of 100 of that original amount and this will immediately give you what you need to pay which is 576 Rand. From these examples you can now see that as long as you know that a percentage means out of 100 you can use your knowledge on fractions and ratios to solve any percentage problem.